and welcome back to CFI's Deeper Dive, a weekly show where CFI dives into the concepts behind financial market events to help you stay ahead of the curve. The big news in the financial markets this week has obviously been the Silicon Valley Bank news. For those of you who have been following the news, you'll know that SVB was a bank that primarily catered to technology companies and startups, with their business mostly in California. With over $200 billion in assets, SVB was the 16th largest bank in the U.S., but ultimately still failed due to a bank run. Now, I've written on the reason why that bank failed, and that was namely due to imprudent balance sheet management. The bank had too much cash deposited, but not enough demand for loans, since many of their tech clients were flush with VC and IPO cash. Now, usually, that's not a big problem for a bank, but they messed up by buying longer dated securities when rates were low to try and earn a wider margin, not anticipating that depositors might want some of their cash back or that rates would move higher so quickly. But as the overall climate for tech companies became more challenging, many of these previously cash-rich companies started needing to draw from their bank cash deposits to make payroll and to keep the lights on. This meant that SVB would have to sell their longer-dated securities to raise cash to return to their depositors. In a normal environment, it probably might have been fine, but in an environment where the U.S. Fed hiked rates from effectively nothing to almost 5%, Within a year, the investments that SVV were forced to sell, roughly $21 billion at last report, caused them to lose almost $2 billion in real money, and eventually caused regulators to come in and shut the bank down. All of this is nothing new, as it's been reported by every major news outlet out there. What I want to talk about in this CFI Deeper Dive is what happened afterwards, and that how this may create future problems for others the famous concept of moral hazard. I'm Andrew Liu, Vice President of Capital Markets here at CFI, and welcome back to another episode of CFI's Deeper Dive. The term moral hazard is one of my favorite terms in finance. Originally, it was an insurance term, but it's come to mean an action or a series of actions that one party takes that may have repercussions that are borne by another party. So for example, I use this example all the time when my kids leave their dirty dishes on the counter or even worse on the dining table. Their action or lack of action means that I'll have to be the one who suffers as I need to clean up and wash their dishes. That's the concept of moral hazard in a nutshell. So what do dirty dishes have to do with SVB? While the US Federal Reserve has been famously accused of creating moral hazard many times in its history, starting with the $3.6 billion bailout of hedge fund long-term capital management, known as LTCM, in 1998 after the Asian financial crisis. The money came from a group of banks, and it was brokered by the Federal Reserve Bank of New York. A fantastic book was written about the LTCM fiasco by Roger Lowenstein called When Genius Failed. I highly recommend lovers of economic history to read that book. So moral hazard became such a part of the Fed during Fed Chair Alan Greenspan's tenure that the market coined a term for it called the Greenspan put. The Greenspan put was the belief that the Fed, led by Chairman Greenspan, would always be ready to come to the aid of a falling stock market with accommodative monetary policies, acting like a put for equity holders and saving them from sustained losses. Many say that the Greenspan puts created the asset bubbles that led to the global financial crisis, or GFC. Even during the height of the global financial crisis, when yours truly was coming in on a weekend to a panicking trading floor at UBS Hong Kong to figure out what sort of exposure we had to Lehman Brothers before the Tokyo market opened on Monday, the U.S. Treasury and the U.S. Fed continued creating moral hazard by choosing to bail out AIG and arranging the shotgun wedding of Washington Mutual to J.P. Morgan Chase while letting Lehman and Bear Stearns collapse. Coming back to the present day, on the back of the SVB failure, the U.S. Treasury, FDIC, and Federal Reserve once again came to the rescue of the market. By extending the FDIC guarantee beyond the limit of $250,000 and ensuring that all depositors are made whole, they may have saved the depositors of SVB and also of Liberty Bank in New York, but have they created problems that might not appear until further down the road, 
Now, whether or not you believe that these actions constitute a bank bailout or not, one of the potential moral hazards might be giving the wrong idea to banks that they can continue to mismanage their balance sheet or continue taking on the wrong duration risk or credit risk and still have the U.S. government effectively coming in to guarantee the bank when things inevitably go sideways. Sure, while presumably much, if not all, of the bank's manager's equity rewards have effectively been wiped out since the stock has now effectively gone to zero, the bank's managers must have most certainly reaped rewards along the way from bonuses that they've received for taking on speculative duration risk or by allegedly backing risky crypto projects in the case of Signature Bank. While proponents may argue that the actions of this weekend prevented thousands of depositors, both individuals and companies, from losing their money, another moral hazard might have been created with these same depositors further down the road. Since these depositors were made whole by the government, instead of exercising prudent judgment and avoiding weaker banks next time they choose where they leave their cash, will they make the same credit and concentration mistake again? So I guess my problem with the events of the weekend is whether in the long run, if banks and depositors have learned anything at all, and more importantly, have regulators realized that the answer is to create better, more consistent supervision and regulation of the banking sector, rather than to create more dirty dishes that somebody else will have to clean up later on. Now, there's so much that we've covered in this week's CFI Deeper Dive that's covered in our comprehensive resources. If any of the terms that I've used are not familiar to you, check out CFI's resource library, where we have detailed articles on wide-ranging topics like the Asian financial crisis, global financial crisis, bank runs, bank balance sheet ratios, and asset liability management. Thank you so much for joining us this week, and we'll see you on the next CFI Deeper Dive.